Welcome to the Featured Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And this week we are talking about Rick's recommendation, Rick's choice, I would actually say, rather than recommendation, <laughs> is, is uh, the Demon Sword Master of Excalibur Academy. Um, but before that, if you want to hear our rather heated discussion, debate, and just all sorts of craziness delving into Rick logic all the way, as I die on a hill defending that uh, my position on uh, on a particular food product, <laughs> you can join us live on twitch.tv slash featured anime podcast uh, where you get to hear all these conversations live and get, just get to hear it completely unfiltered. Or you can uh, become a patron at patreon.com slash featured anime podcast. A dollar a month will get you access to the bonus content. Or if you want to help support us through other means, we do have uh, donation links for you in the show notes. And uh, you can also go to our shop, shop.featuredanimepodcast.com to buy yourself some swanky swag that does help support us, help us grow. Or if you want, you can even use the promo code featured anime with our affiliate link in the show notes for Tokyo treat to get $5 off your first box. And trust me, the treats are worth it and they are oh so delicious. And now onto the meat and brotatoes. Uh, the Demon Sword Master of Excalibur Academy is 12 episodes long. It aired from October 2023 through December 2023, so fairly recent for us, uh, considering the fact that it just ended. <laughs> uh, producers <laughs> for it are Media Net, Nippon, uh, Plus 7, just to name a couple of them. Uh, and the studio for it is Passion. It's based off of a light novel. Genres are action, adventure, fantasy, harem. Just to just to kind of round it out, I would not, I would not include Etchy on this, although it does kind of delve on it. So there are some risque themes or views, but I mean, like they, it's it's not as prevalent or a larger uh, focal point compared to a lot of the other anime that are Etchy uh, focused, so to speak. I would agree with that. Um, basically what ends up, so you're starting off in the, the, in an ancient kingdom that is a thousand years old where we're first introduced to our main protagonist, Leonis, uh, Leonis, who's, uh, the demon Lord who is a demon Lord. Uh, he, to fulfill a promise, chooses to reincarnate himself and arrives a thousand years into the future. However, the reincarnation process, the spell actually was flawed he ended up being about 10 years old. He says he's 10 years old. No, we no one knows how old he actually is. Uh, and then he meets a Roselia, a girl who is confronting the voids and voids are humanity's next biggest danger. Um, and so this is basically his journey through the world a thousand years into the future, him trying to find uh, a goddess that he promised he would go to the ends of the earth for to try and find. And that is that is basically it. That is the sum of it. It's him on a island man-made built island ship type thing. And they are fighting these creatures that are called voids and trying to basically fight and survive. And he is trying to learn and grow with the world around him and make a new demon army to grow and take over the world. I mean, that's pretty much the whole show. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't very deep. It wasn't very, it was shallow. Yeah. <laughs> had no it was substance. Surface level. It was, it was fan service. It, that that's what it was. It, it yeah. had more yeah. in my mind. It had more, generic everything than anything else and for being an overpowered protagonist my biggest gripe is these these famous famed level 10 spells that he almost exclusively uses didn't do diddly squat in reference to what i think a level 10 should have been because he was supposedly this ultimate mage essentially this ultimate necromancer that could like unleash level 10 spells every two three seconds every two three, well, whatever to to be and fair to be fair armies. right so at mm -hmm. the very beginning when when you're talking about that he does say it is 
this the amount because he even comments it's like that's the best this spell that's the best it can do there's still bones left and he's actually very disappointed in the reaction and what happened because apparently for his body and the amount of magic that he has at his current level while it is Mm -hmm. massive in comparison the fact that no one else really has magic so to speak in a sense he he does you know he he does uh he does comment on the fact that his mana pool is far smaller than what he used to have so and he equates that to his human body well that and Uh, i would also kind of equate that to him being younger too yeah, but I, I equate the younger to his human body because he he's got a rather, I would say, interesting backstory. He does. Um, in the sense that he used to be one of the six heroes. Was it six or seven heroes? Was uh, it eight heroes? Six heroes, multiple got go- eight demon lords. Like yeah, there you go. Four uh, gods and goddesses and a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, seriously, though. Um but basically, yeah, he's he's one of the six heroes. He's one of the youngest, and he's virtuous, and he's everything you'd want him. To, you'd, he's everything you'd want in a hero. He thinks that he thinks of the people first. He thinks of any time he moves as a hero, he's selfless. He doesn't have the wherewithal to to be to have any self preservation, and uh, th- this is fundamentally shown. In one of the earlier episodes, when they do a flashback to him being a human and him being young, 12 years old, I think it was, and de- defeating orcs and the like. And what ends up happening is they're trying to save this town that's been overrun with these monsters. And he's got a very old, wise, you would assume, sage and this angelic healer. And their intention is to turn it to basically above the city, put a small sun that will cook, bake. Boil, oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, like I, I got kind of lost in thought there while you were trying to describe. Yes. No, like, like I wouldn't consider the other heroes to be really heroes considering how morbid and evil that they are. And, yeah. and it's like, Morally corrupt. Yeah, they are 100% corrupt on it. And it's even commented on it uh, that the other heroes are are corrupt. Uh, and then it's also commented on how he was not corrupt. Yeah, how he was innocent. Yeah. And in this, in their eradication of these monsters, they were going to wipe out the city. And the reason is, oh, I can just re- I can resurrect all of the people. So we can just get rid of the monsters and resurrect the people. Minimal damage. And... and as a topical solution, that makes perfect sense. You know, if you're not going to damage any of the buildings and you're not going to leave anybody with long term illnesses and you could probably actually heal them better than they were originally, then, you know, it, it makes sense. However, well, it wouldn't be that they heal them feel, better than they were originally. I mean, like the very fact that I you're killing someone, I mean, well, like, I know, you're, like, there's still that psychological scarring, right? Especially for the oh, children. That are going to be going yes. through that. I mean, like, there's going to be that scarring for it. So, but I was saying, like, let's say you broke your arm three years ago and it healed, but it wasn't healed correctly. You are incinerated and brought back and healed. You are now in a better physical condition. So that's the only reason I say that you could possibly be okay. better than you were before. But there's you still Fair have enough. the psychological trauma of being boiled and, and alive. Yeah, and, and and I like the contrast and the dynamic in between him and them. However, it is very brief in which you see them. Right. And when you're first introduced to the other two heroes, it's not in the forms that you see when they're when they're when that is happening. You, you see them in their mm. final form when he's already and Leonis used to be a hero. He is no longer a hero. He is a demon lord. Correct. Uh, was- and what ends up happening, too, is the others kind of like pay heed or homage or whatever to the gods. And then they get an next power or whatever it is. And their forms kind of change pseudo change or whatever it is at the exact same time. Uh, but the main focal point of the story really isn't the backstory of it. Those are small snippets of it, which I'm glad that they didn't really focus the whole bunch of time on there. They only focused small parts of the discussion on it and showed you the snippets to kind of help you understand the personality and how they are like, so that way you can gain an understanding of how that person is. And if they don't do the backstory on it, they're very good at telling you about the individual 
right? Or they make references to the individual and, or they'll make small iterative references to the individual throughout the thing. Uh, yeah. Case in point is the uh, dog, the wolf. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who's actually a prince. And he, yeah. you know, he, he was taught, uh, you know, uh, Leonis was taught certain things by the blackest shadow prince, which is the wolf's name, uh, black ass. But which you is also, why I think he has shadow powers. Yes. But he, who had taught Leonis those powers and he even comments mm. it. It's like, he taught me these powers and everything like that. Now, what's interesting is over a thousand years has gone by and, and, uh, their, their official classifications are shadow. So that technically means they're ageless, right? That would be my understanding. Okay. That their classification would be shadow, but I think what actually happened due to the fact that, um, so Leonis was, as you said, originally a hero and he was betrayed, but not, he didn't seek vengeance at all. Oh and yeah. No, he was approached him yeah. and was like, heroes kind of bore me, but you're interesting. You're honest. You're this, you're that. And she kind of saves his life or resurrects him, if you will, because he was betrayed for the exact same reasons that he was a hero. He could not be purchased. He's too strong. If he had some kind of vice, they could use it and they could manipulate him and be able to control the hero. But because he, he's, he would be, as a D&D character, would be, he'd be um, not neutral good and not chaotic good, but... Um, Oh, good, good. Yeah, neutral good, I guess would be the thing. Yeah, he'd just he be knew neutral. he was walking he would, into he would, a trap. He would, yeah, he would be neutral because he didn't harbor any anger or hate. He didn't have a great life growing up. He didn't have, you know, you know, it, 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 he's like, it's all just a matter of happenstance, all a matter of circumstance. It's kind of just move, move about my life. Well, it's kind of how it the is. Reason, but, the reason why I say neutral good is because he, he strove to do good. Uh, I mean... Well, he avoided evil. When he uh, had the... When he had the choice to do good, he did. From what we saw, and yeah, he no, remained no, true to his virtue, whatever he deemed to be virtuous. Like when he I, so, became this the 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 necromancer, essentially necromancer, essentially, um, he pledged his allegiance to the goddess that he followed, and he never wavered. True, and I would say he's more honorable than I would classify neutral good. He was just neutral because good. Right is entirely in the eye of the beholder, right? So, or or it could be a matter of circumstance, right? I Victor guess. dictates history. The the if you know if true. you're on the opposing true. side and you win, the other side was the evil side. Okay, this is true. This is true. So, kind of, kind of, just. I guess what I, I can say is he maintained his moral compass. Whatever I'll agree that might with that. Be. 100%. He did agree m maintain his moral combat compass. If so anything, I think uh, he used his moral compass to his advantage to uh, as given certain restrictions. Right? Of course, yes. 100% of the time. I like that he... I, I like that the anime didn't take anything way too serious. Right? <laughs> it, 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 yeah. it was whimsical. It was nonsensical. Um... They definitely left a lot to be desired, though, for it. The story, I felt, overall was kind of lackluster. Bland. Very bland. Very cookie cutter-ish. It was... Not even chocolate chip cookie. Sugar cookie. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, like, uh, uh, like they, they, it's like they couldn't really decide on what they wanted to do. So, like, and I know that there's a light novel on this, and so, uh, kind of like, like, and I'll, I'll save this for the, for the post-show. Um, but I have some particular viewpoints and I will, I will save it. It's not irrelevant. It's not relevant to the show. That's so why I will save okay. it. Uh, well, but my opinion relevant to the show would be that they focused that they relied too heavily on adult humor, dragging the plot flow forward. Yes. Yes. And they, they had like certain scenes or certain situations where you're watching it. And it's like, Okay, I mean, like, that's obviously fan service, right? He's there, yeah. he's getting scanned, he looks, and while, where he's looking, uh, what's her face is, uh, Elfine, her boobs just happen to be kind of in the way of the monitor, mm -hmm. where it takes up 
half the screen on the TV anyways for for him yeah. to look at the map. He's like, oh, what's that right there? It's like, well, where are you looking, buddy? You looking at the <laughs> monitor or are you looking at the big old pies right there in front of you? Yeah. And I did like the fact that he seemed to be incredibly innocent, but at the same time, it was all an act. Yes. Because he he already lived thousands of years. Well, no, I'm going to say he probably only lived like maybe 85 years total. Um, and the reason I say that is because he was 12 when he when we first see him his, at his youngest for a uh, hero status. And around, I want to say, 18 to 20, he was betrayed. It's not even. Killed. He was only 16. But we have oh, no geez. time. Yeah, we have no time frame or context for when he was from when he was killed all the way up to after I would say he was in his probably in his thirties when he was, you could see him starting to become a full fledged demon Lord mm. ask whatever. And then when you finally meet him at, at the very beginning, he's already there, but who knows like how long that's been. So yeah, I would say total life lived beginning to end 85 years. I would agree with you on that. Maybe it's, you know, but here's the other thing, right? Um, the shadows are there, right? Yeah. And they know what's going on. And then you have the void. And then you also have the references to the other characters that are also from that time frame, or viewpoints of those characters or kind of like reincarnation esque styles of those characters a thousand years into the future. I don't know if they were reincarnations so much as they just became so corrupt that I will they were say, corrupted. I would say for one of them, for one of them, for one of them, basically lived barely holding on to the humanity that he had. Yeah. For the uh, for uh, for uh, one of them, I would say resurrection. The others, I would just. Really? I will. I will. Yes, because that's what they what he what they specifically state. It's like you have been re- resurrected. You've been revived. You've been brought back. Okay. And the only reason why that they were alive is because of, or brought back was because of the mana crystal, which obviously they were still tied to and the sacrifices Mm -hmm. sent to it. Okay. Well, see, here's the thing he realized. So this is why he reincarnated. This is why he came back. Um, He ended up being on the losing side of a battle. That was, was a no win. And he was instructed by his goddess. Hey, I'm going to reincarnate in a thousand years. It's inevitable. Uh, not my reincarnation, but the fact I'm going to die. Like it, it's, it's something that I cannot avoid. And in a thousand years, I want you to find me. Well, I don't know if it's before or after she had passed. He went to his resurrection spell, for instance. Let's call it. No, it was and it was after because you saw him saying goodbye to her for the final time before that, long before that. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't sure because the timeline was very all over the place well you know that it's a thousand years in the future you also know that the reincarnation spell that he had is also was also a failure i was it a failure though that's what he keeps saying the reason i think it might not have been a failure is because he he reincarnated he wouldn't reincarnate as a skeleton he'd reincarnate as himself as his his younger self granted depends on how or, he chose to do the spell and the conditions at which and everything you know the all the factors we don't know mm-hmm. right we we have no idea and and reincarnate i'm using reincarnation loosely because we don't know what it could have been it could have been just a very unique and particular spell okay and i will <laughs> i will go into de- more details much much later Okay. And the pre-show or the post-show? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'm good with that because you must know something that I don't. Well, I didn't it, it has to do with like end scene. game. has to do with like end game stuff. Final oh. episode, spoiler stuff. You know how yeah, we usually try to, we try well, to be good. Not, we will be good. But what I will say is they <laughs> saved far too much for the final episode. They did. They saved a lot for the final episode where it was like a giant hoorah. Let's finally get all this out there and everything like that. You know, like uh, the last, I mean, for the first few episodes, they do a lot of groundwork. They lay a lot of groundwork. They have it laid out for you. You're starting to get introduced to all these characters. You're being told with all these characters. You're, you're having all this information being thrown at you. And then at the very end, it's just kind of like, 
oh. whatever loose ends we have to just do. Not even that. Ham fisted. That yeah, not even it's it, it's it's like what? Like for real? And then they and then one of the things that honestly really kind of aggravated me about this anime was the Deus Ex Machina type ending <laughs> deal yeah. that, that they have going on all the time. And so and the sword that apparently has he can only use and after he uses he's useless. Basically, after he uses it, he's like, oh, I'm so exhausted. I can't even move or whatever it is. No, but his muscles are sore. He, he can't swing a sword because he's weak. Yeah. There was too much of that. He, he, it was too much of a glass cannon yes. for it. Because growing up, he was this uber strong individual. Like he threw an ogre at the age of 12. He can't be he cannot be in his reincarnated state. He can't be that much he, weaker. He, yeah, I was going to say, well, he can't be any real young. He, he's younger than 12, but not by much. Yeah. He, and it's just frustrating. And, and the other thing is, is Roselia knows Leonis is basically her master, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, yeah, no, I did this thing. And it's like, I can totally do this stuff. And I'm uber powerful. And, and everyone can see he's uber powerful. But she's still like, oh, he's really, really weak. And and I get, you know, I get it. Maybe it's supposed to be a part of the whole facade or whatever, what have you. But it, I just found it very aggravating every single time. It's like she's treating him literally like a child. And I get it because he is a quote unquote tr- child. But when someone's your minion, I feel like at that point, like that kind of symbiotic relationship type thing kind of dies yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. and he he keeps going on and on about she'll be my right hand man and she'll be this she'll be that and it, what's frustrating is out of nowhere he's incredibly strong and out of nowhere she's incredibly strong and then out of nowhere they're incredibly weak and you're like last episode you did this feat of strength this feat of just badassery and then now yeah you, you was- get wiped out by a trip yeah, it was yeah, disappointing. You, you film, so <laughs> it was it was greatly disappointing. It was Power one of the scaling definitely needed to be more paid more attention to. Yes. Yeah. No, it was yeah. It was it was aggravating. Well, 100% it was just pure aggravation for me. Like with how bad the story was, how bad it was written, how bad everything happened how how the main character was acting. I mean, like, the dude could even portray and pretend to be taller and bigger if he wanted yeah. to, right? No, he he did that, and he had this persona that went nowhere. Yeah. And then also, at the and they try to uh, break in comedic relief moments, and it's poorly executed. It's like, what was the purpose of that? Like, Unfortunately. why? Like, there there was no need for that. You could have just you know, it, it felt like they were trying too hard. They were trying to make it entertaining. They were trying to make it funny. They were trying to make it in-depth, great story. They were trying to go through and and provide compelling uh, situations to make you kind of root for Leonis or root for Roselia, and you're not. And and they even tried going for the the emotional route, showing you Roselia's background, showing what happened, or showing about her, uh, showing Regina, her maids or whatever background, trying to give you a little bit of a background story so that we feel sorry for her or whatever, trying touching on that emotional route. And I just felt like I was robbed from main story plot where it could have been a simple discussion of like I am actually her sister you know, due to certain circumstances and just moved on because that's basically what they did in a longer form. Unfortunately, there were, there were so many different things that you could have done that you should have done. And there was so much potential wasted. And it, it just, I looked forward to this. I chose it because one of my friends was like, dude, there's a lot of hype around this. It's supposed to be really good. Well, it's source material is impressive. Yeah, I mean, and, well, well, you 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 had told us during uh, the last episode the reason why you you chose it is because your brother told you to check it out, and you yeah. started watch you watched the first couple of episodes. You're like, I'm sold, and the first couple of episodes, and uh, 
in the first episode, my wife walks into the room. She looks at the TV. She looks at me. She goes, Rick chose this, huh? I was like, <laughs> yep, he most certainly did. Well, I think I had seen like three episodes at that point, and it had it really did sell me like it had potential. It yes, it was a little bit campy. Yes, there was a there was a few issues going on, but I was like, they're going to resolve it. Everything they've done here looks like it's building to something great. Everything here looks like it's going the correct way. And it, they just dropped the ball. Drop the ball doesn't even begin to describe what they did. They 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 uh, they they not only dropped the ball, but they kicked it out of the stadium. I honestly wish they would have just gone with one one not genre, but one one age group. And what I mean by that is there was a lot of innuendo. There was a lot of ha ha funny jokes. Yes. And then unfortunately, it, they kept going from 12 year old to 18 year old, 12 year old to 18 year old as far as humor is concerned. And you're like, now I just feel like it's not just an emotional roller coaster, but I'm not even laughing at the jokes anymore. I find it absurd. Yeah. No, that's that's fair. So I, mean, I don't know, man. I mean, like, honestly, for this ep- for this uh, for this show, I don't have too much. I can really dive into it. I don't I don't there there is something that it doesn't take place during the last episode. Right. So I will talk about mm-hmm. this. There's a character that a sh- couple of characters you're introduced to. One, you don't know how he shows up into the future, but he's from the past, just like apparently everyone else is. That's of importance. Yeah. Time travels. And then you have someone else that Terminator's in to the future. I was going to say that. They straight up Terminator's in, comes in, crouched, naked, stands up. Oh, look, clothes, takes clothes, puts them on. However, when they Terminator into the area, it's on an abandoned, loosely said, in ruins, basically, is what I would say. In ruins, it would be more accurate. The premise was that the the hero, that the main character, Lannis, was going to awaken at the touch or at the presence or at the rebirth of his goddess, right? And this Terminator chick terminators into an area that supposedly has this goddess about to be reborn fully. And there's no, no one ever confirms, denies or anything. Right. So, and so the only reason I feel like she was brought there was to either mislead or. Well, she she states her specific purpose. Why she's there. I understand that. But and th- this is why I say it is a thousand years into the future. Right. Because they said it like multiple times. times. And she's like, oh, this is must be a thousand years in the future. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's weird. Everyone knows that they're going to go to sleep for a millennia or they'll be here millennia later. Right. So what I think actually happened was um, they for for Leonis, what he actually did. um, Why I go go to the spell portion of it is he was teleporting. His magic wasn't that he was technically reincarnating. He was time traveling. And part of the time traveling portion was he had to send his spell spirit into the future through the stone and be reborn and the stone give birth because he was in a stone. All right. That's my theory. I'm stretching for the stars. I'm reaching for the moon. I'm hoping for the best. You know what I mean? It's better than all this reincarnation spell failed. I'm a human again. Lame. I got a better one. Hit me. So you know how they have, they're really big on magic crystals being a power source, right? Yes. My theory would be that it was a spell, like you said, but it wasn't it wasn't time traveling. It, it was reincarnation. Uh, the thing is, I feel like his spell either wasn't done, which is why he came out too early, or it worked too well, meaning that the, the spell he said or he used was too powerful and it reverted him back to a child. So either it was too strong and did its job too well, or um, he woke up too early. Because you remember, he was supposed to wake up a thousand years in the future to protect, provide, whatever, be with his goddess, who, who is nowhere to be seen, supposedly. Or she hasn't woken up, or she hasn't been activated. You know, there, there's so many ors, there's so many buts, there's so many possibilities. I mean, I'll say this. Uh, I know who, I, I'm like 90% sure I know who the goddess is. And I'm pretty sure you know too. 
I, I'm fairly certain, yes. Okay. So that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let everyone else come to their, their own decisions on that. Uh, so, all right, sir. I got nothing else, really. I honestly don't. Sadly, me as well. All right. So on a scale of up to 10, sir, how would you rate this? So I'm probably going to sit in a seven. It's like seven or eight. No, I'm kidding. Um, that, that's far too high. Yeah. For my disappointment, this will be punished. Um, typically, this is right up my alley as far as what I'd want to watch. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. As we know, our scaling system goes from one to ten. It doesn't hit zero. Five is typically middling. It's you know, I have no strong feelings one way or the other. But I do have strong feelings about this. Strong distaste. So I'm going to give this a two. Uh, it's not something that I'd recommend. It's not something that I'd give to anybody else. It, it it's a waste of time. So you you put this on the on the level of sky crawlers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It, it mainly because of the disappointment. Like they had something good and they just fubbed it. I could be convinced to go up to three, but it, it, uh, yeah, I, I I dislike this. Okay. No, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, For me, um, the animation was, honestly, story aside, animation was actually really well. The animation was good. Uh, The character development was poor, right? So Mm -hmm. it didn't, the music for it was kind of lackluster. The the story overall was just kind of bad. You're left with too many questions in general. There's no direction on it. And so they just kept throwing things at you left or right. And then giving you no results whatsoever. Um, It is not something I would actively watch again. Like I would actually not want to watch this again at all. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even recommend this to anyone, honestly. Like I, I, yeah, like and and during the pre-show, I had said uh, before you came back, and then after I after you took your your headphones off, I even said this is like I can only see at most from you a five at most. I said oh, that's generous. I said I said because it while it hit the genres of what you typically like, there's a lot in here that just that they fumbled they they fumbled way too much for it. I mean, like in all honesty, um, yeah. I can't give it a one. I didn't. It's not like I actively hated it because I didn't actively hate this at all. There's only one anime that I actively disliked, actively hated <laughs> for the prime primary show that I actively disliked, actively hated. Anyways, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, that that's Glass Lip. Uh, uh, they did do, in my personal opinion, they did do uh, better than Sky Crawlers. In honest, in honest. All honesty. The the only way they did it better was they had like four, maybe maybe seven scenes total that were, in my opinion, well done and, and properly animated. Everything else like felt like really really awkward CGI. For Skycrawlers? No, 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 for this. Well, the the awkward CGI was all the monsters, and that didn't surprise yeah. me. They have that in almost every anime anymore. So that I'm kind of I'm over that because I see that so often, oh. so more a- anymore. It's it's kind of like yeah, I I kind of so that's kind the of, new norm. It's it's become it's kind of the norm. Like if you watch oh. Black Summoner CG fighting, really? is, it's it's got way worse. Got way oh, worse. No. Yes. Uh, but it's still an entertaining show nonetheless. Um, this, eh, like, may, I mean, like, if there's a season two, obviously I would watch it, but it wouldn't be something that I would want to watch myself. It would be something because. You're a completionist. Yeah, because I'm a completionist. So I feel like they did, they put, they threw out too much, left too much on the table and pushed too hard for a season two, um, which just kind of left a bad distaste in my mouth. So uh, for me, yeah. I'm going with a three. Okay, so here's what I'll do. I feel like I'm throwing you a bone here because I'm going to have to go off of what you're saying as far as um, as far as all, all of the monsters are looking like that. I, I haven't experienced that myself. But if, if that is the norm, then I will go up to a three. Well, but I, you need to think about this, right? You rated uh, Ajin higher 
and the CG, all the anime was bad CG wise. The story, yeah, but the story, the story carried saved it. it. Yeah, but yes, this, it, I can this, handle bad CGI with a good story. Right. So this only had some bad CGI, whereas of that had all bad story. CGI. But the story, like the, some of the animation carried it. Okay. I mean, so like I said, I I could be convinced for a three. So I, I will. I'm going to go up to a three just because like it's teetering. It's not as bad as Skycrawlers. By yeah. any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. No. No. I wasn't but trying to convince was you to, so to do that. I'm just. I was just letting you know. It's like, look, like if your base is as bad CGI. I mean, like I'm just trying to help you help remind you of some of the bad CG shows we have watched because there are <laughs> others. But you know, Ajin, uh, yes, it had bad CGI. But here's the thing: it was so good, it overcame it, which is why we gave it such a good score. Uh, Granted, it's not something you're supposed to overcome, but that's beside the point. Uh, there's another. There's a couple others as well where we weren't fans of the CG, especially when they flip flopped. It's a plain one. I know I what it is. One. I can't yeah, think of I, it. I can, I can see it. I can see it in my head. Um. But I don't think we rated Ajin that high, did we? Probably did. I thought it, we rated like close to seven. I okay. could be mistaken. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll go with that. Why not? Sure. Why not? Anyways, but for this one, not seven. So uh, not, two, not. or you, or do you want to go three? Um, I'm gonna go three. You're gonna and, go three. The reason, the reason why I'm going up is. If there are more bad CGI and it, it's becoming the norm, I can't knock this for following the norm. That being said, I'll, I'll say uh, why why it's becoming yeah. the norm in the in the post show. Okay. My on why I feel like it's becoming the norm. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll mimic your three on this one. Okay, so three and three, plenty of TNA, plenty of TNA. Don't get me wrong, but it, it, too much, too much. It, it you TNA is decent and it's okay, but it's not a story. True. So true, true, true. All right. Next week, it's going to be a random choice. And uh, uh, I'm trying to find one that we haven't seen. So hang on. Uh, oh, sweet Jesus, man. You know, it's kind of disturbing how how uh, how many how many things we've we've actually seen. Dude, 200. Grave of Fireflies. 262. Grave of Fireflies. That sounds familiar. I, 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 I have. Of Fireflies or of the Fireflies? Uh, well, it, it's going to be a. Uh, 1986 Ghibli. horror. It's a, it shouldn't be a horror. It's a Hayao Miyazaki film. I feel like I'm saying the name wrong. Grave of the Fireflies, 1989. 1988, yeah. It says war horror. Oh, yeah. It's, I, I wouldn't consider it horror. Well, I'm just reading the genre of it. So, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. It's, I mean, like the genre is labeled uh, for the one that I can see for the Grave of the Fireflies. Uh, that is a Studio Ghibli. Studio Ghibli typically doesn't do horror. No, no that's why I was like, I think I got they the do. Horror. However, this is classified as a drama historical for them. So, if you feel like we got something right, something wrong, did it too much justice, not enough justice or anything else, feel free to let us know. All our contact information for you is available on our website, featuredanimepodcast.com. If you feel like supporting us here in the pre and post show that we usually do with every single episode, you can go to patreon.com slash featured anime podcast, a dollar a month will get you access to that bonus content. Or if you want to join us live, here are thoughts completely unfiltered fumbles and everything like that, or hear us just hear me yell ridiculous obscenities about food. This for this week's choice, you are more than welcome to, uh, and you can also get notified when we go live. If you follow us on our Twitter or if you're on our discord and you'll get a little bit of nudge, you'll get a little notification saying, Hey, we are live and you're welcome to come join us. And if you want to help support us by getting yourself some nice, delicious treats, you can go to uh, our affiliate link in the show notes for Tokyo Tree and use coupon code featured anime at checkout for five dollars off your first box. And trust me, the treats are delicious. And until next time, I'm Jack. 
I'm Rick. And we'll see you next time.